Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor and I am starving and I don't really have what I want to eat in this house and so I think I might go somewhere. haven't decided where, but first I was going to make you this video. Um, this is from XRP Bart and this is a tweet from I guess yesterday. Square uh, from Zero Hedge. Square buys about 3,318 Bitcoins for $170 million and here we go again. So I do think you're going to see a lot of these companies step up to the plate and buy Bitcoin, but I think that the just as as companies like this do or big time investors, by the time they tell you they're buying it, they've already bought it. And so the real question is, if they're telling you they're buying Bitcoin, what are they buying right now for real? Because that means they already bought Bitcoin. Um, so that's that's what is interesting to me. Okay. Next, I wanted to remind everyone of something. Um, th this was the title of an article that, that came out, I guess, in the last few days, let's see, yesterday. If you joined the GameStop frenzy or dabbed with Bitcoin, get ready for the tax man. Uh, Mr. Uh, my Robin Hood tax form for 2020 is 374 pages. Day trading is fun, said one entrepreneur. But the point they're making is um, every one of those trades is a taxable event when you're going in and out of stocks or Bitcoin or anything else. And so I wanted to remind you, this is why I use iTrust Capital. I have an, a Roth IRA and a SEP IRA with iTrust Capital, and I'll show you what I can invest in through that thing. But look at this. It says any investment made inside of an IRA is sheltered from taxable events. All gains made in a traditional simple uh Traditional, simple, or SEP IRA are tax deferred until funds are withdrawn. Gains made on a Roth IRA are tax free as long as no funds are removed until the age 59 and a half. So I've got a Roth and a SEP. And in this iTrust Capital IRA, I'm able to get all of this right now. These are digital currencies, but they also have physical gold and physical silver that's on the blockchain um, on there too. So uh, I just want, and, and by the way, I've got a link in the description of my videos where you can click on go to their website and there's a coupon code where you can get a month free as well. This is like my favorite thing in the world because I can just buy, if I had a, I don't do this normally, but if I had a whim, especially if you're out there and you trade a lot, you can, inside of that iTrust Capital IRA, you can sell, buy, in, like in a Roth IRA, in mine. I've done it before, but I just don't do it a lot. You can literally sell out, and you don't have to worry about the tax consequences. As long, there are none, as long as you take it out after age 59 and a half, um, or by 59 and a half, something like that. Um, Michelle Vandenberg sent me this. Now, this is huge. Um, we've talked over the last few weeks about how the big boys have said they're coming into custody. The ones that that have that have announced were Goldman Sachs, Citigroup, J.P. Morgan. Um, who else? BNY Mellon was one. That's what this article is about. This article locked me out unless I paid. But yesterday it was letting me in, and so I clipped something I wanted to show you. Um, this is from the article. BNY Mellon is working with a vendor on the technology. They're talking about their custody technology. Uh, though it's not not making the name the name of the company public, Demissy said, we take on this mindset that that not everything that, that we offer needs to be built in house. He said we constantly scour for best in class technologies fit for the purpose that we can bring in, but it needs to be resilient, it needs to be secure, it needs to be scalable, and it needs to integrate into our system. That accelerates our time to market and allows us to focus on what we're good at. The bank is building the ability to let clients see all their assets, digital and traditional. Well, this is who I believe they're talking about. You, if you've been around, you know, um, PolySign. Well, actually, let me just play it for you. Because we can't say it loud. It's a secret. Even being while Mellon said it's a secret. See right here? 
they said um, they're not making the name the vendor. Though it's not making the name of the company public, that's because PolySign, which is the most secretive institutional custody platform, has two retired BNY Mellon execs on it, and we've been watching for a while now. Okay, um, this was the big news yesterday. Fed, Chow, Fed Chair Powell says digital dollar is a high priority. Now, CNBC had had a few segments on this yesterday. Here's the first. What did digital dollar mean for Bitcoin in the broader crypto space? Let's bring in our very own Bitcoin baller, Brian Kelly. Brian, good to hear from you. Um, I kind of thought that dollars were already sort of digital. I mean, I can send you money via Venmo or PayPal or Zelle right. or whatever. I mean... Isn't that the case right now? Yeah, I mean, we we pretty much already have a digital do dollar already. I mean, how many people, you know, if you have kids, you know that they never, ever use cash. Um, everything is going to electronic payment. So, you know, I, I don't think there's, there's really that big of a deal about a digital dollar. Um, you know, the, on the other hand, I think it would be just fantastic for Bitcoin because what you do know is that once the Fed has a digital wallet and they can put more money in there, they will continue to print that money. And that is just the exact opposite value proposition from Bitcoin. Oh, so you think that if the Fed actually goes ahead with the digital dollar, that would mean that that uh, they would print more money it, it, because it's just that much easier? Yeah, I think there, exactly. There's two things. I mean, instead of mailing out stimulus checks, they just simply credit your wallet with more money. Alternatively, if they wanted to get you to spend that money, they put $1,400 in there, and if you don't spend it within a week, they take 100 bucks out. And that gets you to create, you know, that gets inflation creating, velocity, all of those type of things. Again, I think it would be really good for Bitcoin. BK, it's Tim, uh, first time caller, long time fan. And my question to you is the volatility <laughs> around Bitcoin over the last few days, but maybe even the last six weeks, but really the moves down. Within the community of Bitcoin traders, isn't this type of a move almost perversely seen as positive? Um, and, and doesn't it almost <laughs> embolden, uh, again, the core here? Because there's been so many of these runs um, where people have said the sky is falling and they've been followed ultimately by higher highs. Talk about that dynamic emotionally in the sector. Yeah, so it, that's really a, a great point, Tim, and love your work on the show here. Um, I'll tell you Thank what, you. If, you know, <laughs> if you look back at the 2017 bull market, um, you had multiple pullbacks up 30%. Um, so this is not unusual for Bitcoin. Yeah. It sounds unusual, um, you know, when in the context of stocks. Uh, but for Bitcoin, this is a very natural part of what the bull market is like. And people who have held or hodled, as they call it in, in the Bitcoin world, um, through multiple cycles, understand that you know, ultimately here you want to buy the dip. Um, I think we're just getting started with square buying and MicroStrategy and other S&P 500, and then as well as the institutionalization is get, just getting started. So I think we're in the first couple innings of this a bull market cycle. All right. <coughs> okay, a couple of things I wanted to <coughs> say about that. The first is that he's a thousand percent right, and, and those of you that are new to this, you need to understand, even though pullbacks like you saw the last 48 hours, sometimes it, it can be... The, those type of pullbacks can be really tough on you if you've never been around for this kind of stuff before. But having been around since 2013, I can promise you, this is this is the roller coaster ride that you're on. This is what you have to ride. If you it, it, what we what we've said for a long time is, if you want to in, if you want to enjoy thousands of percent gains, which is what I've seen. I mean, I, I myself have seen in in crypto. Then you have to endure up to ninety percent losses. The key is you hadn't lost anything or gained anything until you sold. Now, the other thing I want to mention about this digital dollar is make no mistake. I'm going to tell you something that you're not going to hear from the government. Make no mistake. What the digital dollar, the digital currencies have a lot to do. These these governments didn't just all of a sudden d discover this. These people have been working on this for decades. And the core of the reason that they want them is for control. Once they once they have a digital dollar, and it's not just the digital dollar, it's all these governments around the world. Once they have a digital dollar, they are going to be able to control us. And that's just that's a fact. It's coming whether you like it or not. They're going to be able to airdrop you money. And that's something that was mentioned. I think he mentioned it. But they're also going to be able to 
They'll be able to control your money, too. They'll be able to impose negative interest rates if that's what they want to do. That's what this has always been about, folks. I mean, don't, don't be fooled by this. This is coming, whether you like it or not. You need to play by the rules. You need to make sure you pay your taxes and all of that stuff. But let's, you have to understand what it is. And I, the, the way I see this thing and have always seen it is I just hope to get, I hope that, that I can really take advantage in the early run of, of what um, people that are late to the party, it could be really bad for them. I think it's going to be really good for those of us that were early. Okay, um, now listen to this. This is also, they're talking about uh, Jerome Powell's speech as well. All right, welcome back. It is time, as that snazzy graphic says, for rapid fire. Some stories and stuff that should be on your radar. Here now to break down the stuff. Deirdre Bosa, Bob Pisani, and Kate Rooney. Let's kick things off with Bitcoin. The It says cryptocurrency in the prompter. I'm not calling it. No, it's not a currency. I'm not going to call it that. The crypto thing is having a bad week. Tumbling below $50,000 after hitting record highs over the weekend. In two days, Bitcoin's value has dropped by about 18 percent. Sell-offs seem to accelerate after Treasury Secretary Yellen called it, quote, an extremely inefficient way of conducting transactions, end quote. At the New York Times Dealbook Conference today, Federal Reserve Chair Jay Powell sharing his views on the need for a crypto dollar surging during his Senate Banking Committee hearing. We are the world's reserve currency, uh, and we have a responsibility to get this right. We don't need to be the first. We, we need to get it right. It does hold out uh, the prospect of, of the things that you mentioned, very positive. It could, it could help with financial inclusion as well. At the same time, you want to avoid creating um, things that might be destabilizing or that might draw funds away from the banking system. We, we have a banking system. All right, Kay Rooney, your take on this and cryptos, whatever they are, big move. <laughs> Crypto things. It's interesting to hear Janet Yellen's commentary. It feels like things we've seen before. We know that Bitcoin is not an efficient means of payment. Nobody's buying coffee with it. It's not Bingo. being used in that sense. So that was a little bit surprising that it really dragged on Bitcoin as much as it had. We also had Elon Musk tweeting that it was too high and the price was too high and it seems like it might have been a bit overbought. So we're seeing a lot of weakness there. There's also Fundstrat's got this fear and greed index. They say that now that the, on the greed side, it was up to something like a 95, which they hadn't seen in a while. So obviously very volatile. It's proving itself in that sense. But the idea from, Jay, uh, from that we just heard, was it Powell, Clayton? Um, but that we just heard about the idea of a digital dollar that already exists in the private sector and it has not really taken off. You don't have people like Jack Dorsey and Michael Saylor from MicroStrategies, you know, buying Bitcoin because they can't get access to a digital dollar. They want something that is not affiliated with the government, that isn't tied mm -hmm. to a central bank or monetary policy. I don't think it's much of a competition there. I think those things can exist side by side. It's like the off the show that the whatever it was yeah. the office. There's the Bobs, <laughs> right? Bob, Bob Pisani, these are the Jays, the Claytons and the Pals, to Kate's point. Yeah. I mean, but <laughs> right. when they come in, Pal. they move this market. Yeah. I, you know, I really like that tight shot of Jay Powell. I, I mean, it was really. Okay, I, I think you, you, you get the picture. But the bottom line is Janet Yellen does not like Bitcoin. And the other thing to get out of that is they're telling you enough of all of this um, stuff about Bitcoin, what Bitcoin is. Look. On this channel, we're going to be honest about what Bitcoin is and what Bitcoin is not. Most people in the Bitcoin maxi world and most people in crypto, what they want to do with Bitcoin is, is just cheerlead everything about Bitcoin. But I'm not going to do that because it's not true. The truth is that Bitcoin is a store of value because they created a marketing campaign to call it a store of value because they realized probably after they invested or a lot of the wealthy people invested early that it was never going to be the technology that was going to take us to the finish line it's dinosaur technology and they all know it i don't care who it is anthony pompliano knows that all of them know it compared to the other digital assets completely dinosaur technology so it will never be anything but a store of value and they know it 
Okay, that's what the gov. That's the reason the government's saying that too. They know that the technologies that are going to be where the digital dollar and all these things are going to be built are going to be real digital technologies. Maybe XLM or XRP or some of these others, but it's not going to be Bitcoin, and they know it. They know it. And I and by the way, they said that in that video that um, the these guys want to be invested in something that's not attached to the government little secret if you think that bitcoin was created by some guy in his in his um pajamas because he was a good libertarian guy then i still have a giant igloo for sale in south georgia it will melt within 24 hours of you receiving it but it's just the greatest igloo in the world all right um next this is now here's another guy and you need to listen when it gets towards the end this is boston fed svp jim kuna he's he's talking about this too listen to him right now we're building a prototype just to see whether a platform can handle the unique needs of the united states that particular effort is technology agnostic but by distributed i don't mean distributed ledger necessarily or blockchain but a technology that allows for uh, performance and uh, throughput to be enhanced by the this distributed nature the assumption is it would be controlled by the federal reserve right. as a as a centralized body versus decentralized as what bitcoin is so what he said there at the end is very important because what you've been told by these bitcoin maxis is that yeah down with the banks down with the whatever and and the the, the feds can't control bitcoin listen again to what he says it's just your nature the assumption is it would be controlled by the Federal Reserve right. as a as a centralized body versus decentralized as what Bitcoin is. So what he just said, he just told you that whatever they create is going to be controlled by the Feds. You are not going to get rid of the powers that be. Brad Garlinghouse called it. He said they will bring out the tanks and the guns before the government is out of the monetary system. Bitcoin is not going to do that. Period. Bitcoin, if keywords. If it is allowed to exist, Bitcoin will be a store of value and your Bitcoin will go up in value. I own some Bitcoin on the hedge bet that that is probably going to be allowed, but that's the extent of it with Bitcoin, period. Okay, um, wanted to, I told you yesterday I bought the dip and then I saw this, I was, I was excited, XRP vet, diamonds to the sky, sent me this tweet. Breaking, J.P. Morgan, 12-year exec, chooses Algorand. He's pointing out um, this, this um, he's the business solutions director at Algorand. Look, I've said before, there's gonna there's not going to be one single winner. I believe XRP is the one. XRP is going to be the the, the one that that um, hovers over, over all of them, XRP and XLM. But I believe that there are going to be a handful of other winners and I've looked into several of them. Algorand is the one I was buying on the dip yesterday. I loaded up on some Algorand. It's also paying 6% on Coinbase. So I'm excited about that. Crypto Dim, I'll finish this up here. Kim.com, who is a who is um, created Mega Upload, I think it is. This guy's a genius, like programmer. Te uh, I don't know exactly what he would call himself, but the guy's really smart. He's telling you the truth right here. He's told it before in video. Utilization, in other words, utility, will crown the crypto kings. That's why I support that's why I support crypto with the highest chance for mass utilization, mass utility. You won't achieve mass with high fees, Bitcoin, slow transactions, Bitcoin, custodial layers catering to the 1%. Remind yourself to revisit this tweet in 10 years and you'll see I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, and tell your friends and family that if a digital asset has no utility, it's not going to be king. Thank you for listening.